<laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> well, I got a couple announcements before we get started today. Um, directly after service, uh, we will be heading over to the fellowship hall for a pastor appreciation cupcakes. <laughs> yeah, cake and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and so. We're going to show Pastor Debbie how much we appreciate her and celebrate with her. So please stick around and have some cake with us. And tonight we will be having our harvest party. And we're going to have a chili cook-off. And it's, how much is it to? $40 camping, $5 to eat. Yeah. So if you bring $5, you get to eat many different kinds of chili tonight and there'll also be other activities there will be s'mores and games oh not s'mores but like we made some sort of s'more thing that's like s'mores because we're not going to have it outside at all it's all indoors there's going to be like games like i think there's a lego room there's like a toddler area photo booth i can't remember what else is on the map but it'll be a fun time tonight and it starts at 5.30 and ends at 8.30. So. Yeah, and it's all indoors, so you don't have to come here and be cold and rained on. It's going to be fun. Those are costume parties. And if you're decorating, if you're helping us decorate for tonight, um, they're going to do that right after service. So stick around, and they'll get it all set up. But, yeah, harvest party tonight at 5.30. So come on out, eat a bunch of chili. Uh, the, they're go they're going to vote on the chili, right? Yeah, there's going to be some uh, judges from outside the church, I believe. There's, a costume, party, or a yeah. costume contest. there's also a costume, costume contest. contest. If you want to see me dressed up tonight, you better come. That'll be a treat. <laughs> that will be a treat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to get ready to take up tithes and offerings today. Matthew is the only person I see back there. So hey. uh, if you don't mind, oh, uh, gonna do I'm going to pray over that before we get started. Lord... Thank you for this day. Thank you for the chance to get together and worship you. And I just pray that you would bless people as they give today, that you would multiply it, use it for your kingdom. You'd take care of those who give today, give it back to them. And Lord, we do this in joy and in thanksgiving and in your name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. As they pick up the tithe and offering, if you're going to go ahead and stand, we're going to praise and worship this morning. Feel free to come forward. We're just going to take a second. I'm just going to pray before we start. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this morning. We just pray that you would meet with us here. Lord, you are always with us, but Lord, we are coming together in unity and in community, and we pray that you would see us, that you would hear our praise from heaven, that our hearts would be turned toward you that we would give you the praise and the glory and honor that you deserve and that you would show us, Lord, things we need to change and that you would take away anxiety and fears and worries out of us today and that we would just be able to turn our focus completely toward you. We just invite you into this service. Holy Spirit, do whatever you want to do. We are open to you and we give you praise and glory and honor. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day. Jesus, praise you, Jesus. Just want to be with you, Jesus. We just want to be with you, Jesus.
turn your love towards him, your attention towards him. No matter how much stress you're under right now, no matter how much anxiety you feel, no matter how much things are weighing you down in this life, he is with you. I know sometimes it feels like we're all alone, we're going through all these things by ourselves, but he is with you. And he is ready to take some of that load away from you. If you just hand it to him, then your hands are free to praise and worship him. Just turn your love toward him this morning. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. And let the king of my heart be the shadow.
struggling with this, I'm dealing with this, and only God can touch it. Is there something going on right now within your life that nothing else is working? Nothing else is working. No one else can satisfy it. Nothing else can satisfy it. Is there something going on? You know who can satisfy it? It's God. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves that. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves God is enough. Because there's times where it doesn't feel like it. There are times when we're reading his word and it doesn't feel like enough. There are times we're praying and we don't feel like it's enough. But we have to come in and tell our feelings exactly who God is. We have to come in and tell our feelings and say no. It may not feel like it right now, but my God is enough. Jesus died on the cross for me and my family and everyone around me. And he is enough. And we have to tell ourselves and tell ourselves sometimes because we're human and life circumstances are hard. And we have to remind ourselves that he is enough. So this morning, wherever you are, whether you're here or online, whatever it is, let's take this next this next worship song to him and remind ourselves that he is enough. And he can satisfy any desire. He can break chains of sin. In situations, he is enough.
together. God, as we continue to worship you, just in the sharing of your word, open up, open up our hearts and our minds for what you have. Because God, this is your church, this is your service, and you know each one of us. And so God, have your way in the scripture that is shared today. Open up our hearts and our minds to receive what it is that you have. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. We love you, Lord. And we ask this in your mighty name, Jesus. Good morning. God is so good. <laughs> Fun fact, if I'm ever running sound, you'll hear more guitar than anything. I just, I'm partial. And sometimes I go back there and Matt's like, mm, don't touch it. And I'm like, just a little more. He's like, don't touch it. I'm like, please. He's like, don't do it. But anyhow, I could just sit and pray and man, some guitar in the background, guitar music, and just being with the Holy Spirit. Like that right there. That sounds amazing. So good. Now, this last couple weeks, we um, were talking about how to obtain rest, right? Because God tells us to rest. And so the last two weeks, um, if you want it summed up, if you get on our Facebook in the comments, I posted the four things for us to be able to find rest in God. Um, and so with that, we laid some stuff down, we invited the Holy Spirit in to work on some stuff, which leads us to today. So we are gonna start the morning with a story. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's relevant. So we're gonna tell the story. So um, there's a story of two farmers, right? That's, that's pretty, I mean, relevant. We live in Green County, right? Okay. So there's a story of two farmers. Um, one farmer, they both, there hadn't been any rain, a lot of drought, you know. One farmer was like, well, there's no rain in this forecast. I'm not going to prepare my field. What's the point? I'm just going to waste, I'm going to waste the seed, I'm going to waste the, you know, the time, all of it. It's not rained in so long, so what is the point of me preparing for this field? Because it's not going to rain. The other farmer was like, man, it's not rained but I'm going to prepare anyways in case it does. I'm going to, so this farmer went out and he planted. He planted, he sprayed, he did all the things. He went out and he got ready. And he's like, all right, God, now it's up to you. I did my part. I, I got it ready. Well, guess what? It rained. Now, which of the farmers do you think is better off? The one who got ready. The one that even though it, there was no rain in sight, none. It looked dry as could be. No change in the weather was coming. He said, all right, God, I'm going to trust you, so I'm going to go ahead and get ready. Where the other farmer was like, mm, I see no rain coming. They're not calling for rain, so I'm not going to waste it. Man, right? I wouldn't want to be him or her. Would you? Would you want to just be like, ah, I don't see it coming, it's fine. No. If you do want to be that person, we need to have a serious conversation. Okay? Because I'm deeply concerned. Um, so, we want to be the people who prepare for rain. Okay? So, with all of that, we are in a preparing for rain season. As a body, as individuals. We are in a preparing for rain season. You know, God has placed it so heavily upon my heart and even in Pastor Corey's heart for the youth. And like, 
the leadership, when you're talking, it's a preparing for rain season. It's been, it's been a little dry, right? It has been. But God said, get ready. Get ready. So are we going to get ready? Are we going to have faith? Do we believe God is who he says he is? You know, or do we say, yeah, he is who he says he is, but I'm going to pay attention to the weather report. You know, meteorologist is the only profession that you can be wrong every single day of your life and still have a job. I'm just saying, I wouldn't trust that over God. Okay, we'll get back to that. So, now, when I say we are in a preparing for rain season, I'm talking as individuals, as a church family, as a body, as a community right? That's what I'm saying. Now, I'm going to define rain. Because if you're like me, the whole time we're talking, you're going to be like, what is rain? And why are we preparing for it? Because that's how my brain works. So when I say preparing for rain, I'm speaking spiritually. I'm talking Holy Spirit coming and doing whatever he wants. Um, Includes, but not limited to, God's presence. And the things that only come from being in God's presence, peace that exceeds all understanding, comes from being in God's presence, a rest. You guys, we've been talking about that. comes from being in God's presence, miracles, darkness lifted, right? Um, Man, chains of sin broken for good. We're talking generational bondage that's continually passed on and passed on. Just because, you know, great-grandpa abused great-grandma, great-grandma abused, or grandma abused mom, mom abused kids, and it goes on and on and on. No, that stuff can be broken. We can break these things. Alcoholism can be broken. Substance abuse can be broken. I mean, all of these things can be broken when God is involved. It is. It's in, it's in Scripture. Matt and I have lived it. There's things in our family that we had to decide to break. And it wasn't in our power. It was in God. Without God's help, it wouldn't have happened. And so we're doing our best to give our kids not those learned things that are poisonous and chains. And so when rain of the Holy Spirit comes, these things can be broken. Healing. Emotional. Physical. If healings, if the thought of someone being miraculously healed scares you a little bit, it's okay. It's all right. Because things that are not, we don't see every day, can make us nervous. But the word of God has healings throughout it. And we've seen healings. We had a youth student one time who had, Matt and I, um, had seizures real bad, epilepsy. Couldn't be in a room of flashing lights. There were many nights from this room. We had to take him to the emergency room because something set him off or he caught a glimpse or something or a video would set him off and we had to go to the ER because he was having seizures. Well, then we go to camp probably about a year later. We're up at teen camp and he has a seizure on the first night from the lights. Night three, he walks in. And he's staring at the lights. And I'm like, you have to get out of here. You're going to have another seizure. We're going to wind up in the emergency room. Like, you have to get out of here. And he goes, no, Debbie, look. He's like, God's healed me. I asked him, and he healed me. And he hasn't had a seizure since. And it has been seven years. Now he has a family. He's married. Like, God did that. God did that. We've seen it. We've seen outcome, not a single seizure in seven years because God came in and healed him. And he was like, God, I believe you can. I believe you can. (coughs) Excuse me. And so when I say we are preparing for rain, we are preparing ourselves. We We are planting the seeds. We are getting ready for these things to happen. Because they still happen. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about emotional healing. Man, emotional healing is just as important as physical healing. It is. And a fresh desire within. Man, when the Holy Spirit 
when he when you get in a room with him, even if you're by yourself, you're driving, you're wherever, just his presence is good. It's calming. It's good. Now, something important that we need to remember. When the Holy Spirit shows up, it doesn't have to be loud. Okay? There's a lot of TikToks out there that are ridiculous. Okay? You know what I'm talking about. They make you laugh. All right? But that's all they're good for. Okay? They make me laugh too and shake my head. But a, a move of the Holy Spirit doesn't have to be loud. It doesn't have to look obnoxious. It doesn't have to look like somebody just dumped a bucket of water on a room full of cats. Do you hear me? It doesn't have to look like that. Now, if God wants it to look like that, well, by all means, he'll make it look like that. But it doesn't have to. The Holy Spirit doesn't work in one way. He doesn't just show up and it look like this. The Holy Spirit is in a box. Okay, the Holy Spirit doesn't say, okay, I'm going to show up and it's going to be loud and we're all going to scream. And he also doesn't say, I'm going to show up and everyone's going to be on their faces crying. Okay, we all react differently to the Holy Spirit. And so we have to remember that just because there's no pomp and circumstance doesn't mean it's not God. Because God moves in the stillness. Holy Spirit speaks in the quiet. Yeah, does sometimes he come upon you when you're laying on the floor laughing for 25 minutes? Yes, I've done that about a month ago. Couldn't stop it. The more I tried to stop it, the harder I laughed. I felt like a lunatic, honestly, but it felt real good. It felt real good. So I get the giggles, okay? Other people I know sob. They cry their hearts out. Does that mean the Holy Spirit was different for me than, than her? No. Holy Spirit's the same. But I needed laughter to break up some darkness that was I was holding on to. And she needed to cry because that's how the Holy Spirit came upon her to release what she was holding on to. So it doesn't have to look one way. It can look several ways. And yeah, it's going to feel a little silly because we've been in a drought. It's going to feel a little weird to laugh. I felt it, and I knew what it was, but I couldn't control it. And God was reminding me, you're mine. I have you. I know what you've been carrying. And this is how I'm going to break it up in you and release it. And he did. And it was amazing. But it did feel a little, <laughs> little silly. I'm in a room full of people sobbing, and I'm laughing hysterically on the floor. I mean, come on, you can giggle. That's, it looks a little different, okay? But we have to tell our mind that it's okay if it looks different when the Holy Spirit's involved. Now, I'm not talking forcing something to happen. We don't have to force anything. God created the world. Holy Spirit can move without us helping, right? Hear me on that. So, it doesn't have to be forced. So this is what I say when I say rain. Preparing for rain. Now, as we are preparing for rain, part of preparing, so this auto-corrected, I'm going to read it to you because it's funny. Part of preparing for the rainbow is being ready. What was God's rainbow? Promise. Right? Aw, that was cute. Good job, iPad. So, part of preparing for rain is being ready. And that's what we've been, that's what we've begun. You know, a few weeks ago, we revealed darkness within us. Sin we were holding on to, grudges we were holding on to. We brought it into the light of Jesus. And then I burnt it. Because those things belong in hell with Satan. Not in us where the Holy Spirit is. Now, being ready for the rain to fall, being ready to receive, doesn't mean we have to be perfect. No one in this room is perfect. Only one perfect person walked this earth, and it was Jesus Christ. 
Being ready doesn't mean being perfect. Being ready means being willing to receive. It means calling out the dark things within us. Being ready means reading his word and spending time in prayer and praise. It doesn't mean being perfect. The enemy will come in and say, you're not good enough to receive this. The enemy is going to come in and say, you're too far gone. You walked away too long ago. There's no hope. The enemy is going to come in and say, it will never get better. Lies. Lies from the pit of hell. Because you know what? We can't be too far gone. We can't. We can't be too far gone to turn back to God. And no matter what our past is, no matter what we did yesterday, if we come to him and ask for forgiveness, it's forgiven. It is forgiven. And we have to accept the fact that God forgives us. Because sometimes we ask for forgiveness and then we hold on to guilt. Guilt is not of God. There is no condemnation in the Lord Jesus Christ is what the word says. So guilt is from Satan. Because there are things in my past every once in a while Satan comes in and all of a sudden I'm feeling guilty. And I'm like, what is, no, no, I will not feel guilty over this. I asked for forgiveness. I changed my ways. I'm not going back there. Yeah, is it part of my life? Yeah, but you know what? It doesn't dictate my future. Because once we ask for forgiveness, it's been forgiven. And then we can do better. We can do better. And so it doesn't mean being perfect. It means that we need to be ready to receive. Now, we're going to move in to today's scripture. It's about Elijah. There's so many things. You guys, Elijah is my favorite in the Old Testament. I'm just saying. Might be why our kids named Elijah. I really, really liked him a lot. I mean, Elijah is just, he's my favorite. We would preach about Elijah every week if it were up to just me. But God says, no, we're not doing that. So we're not. But, okay, so our scripture for today is in 1 Kings 17 through 17, 1 through 24. It says, now Elijah, who was from... Gilead told King Ahab, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Then the Lord said to Elijah, all right, so here, first off, I want us to notice that Elijah said there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Elijah gave a prophecy there. No, he had faith in God enough to say, no, there will be none. End of story. All right, verse 2. The Lord said to Elijah, go to the east and hide by Kareth Brook near where, the, where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Kareth Brook east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. But after a while, the brook dried up, and there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. And I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath, and as he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bite of bread, too. But, she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house, and I only have a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook at this last meal, and then my son and I will die. Wow, that's heavy. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord of the God of Israel says. There will always be flour and oil, olive oil, left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said. 
and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. There we go again, Elijah. He said, no, there's going to be enough. Just make a little for me first. And then it came to pass. Okay. 17. Sometime later, the woman's son became sick. He grew worse and worse, and finally he died. Then she said to Elijah, O man of God, what have you done to me? Have you come here to point out my sins and kill my son? But Elijah replied, Give me your son. And he took the child's body from her arms, carried him up the stairs to the room where he was staying, and laid the body on his bed. Then Elijah cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, why have you brought tragedy to this widow who has opened her home to me, causing her son to die? And he stretched himself out over the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord my God, please let this child's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's prayer, and the life of the child returned, and he lived. That's good. That's good. Then Elijah brought him down from the upper room and gave him to his mother. Look, he said, your son is alive. Then the woman told Elijah, now I know for sure that you are a man of God and that the Lord truly speaks through you. Wow. Right there, just in that small bit, we see where Elijah had faith enough to say these bold things because he heard from God. He listened. He spent time. He trusted the Holy Spirit. Now, are we in a place where if the Lord were to speak to us or give us direction, would we hear? Because sometimes it's easy to say, yeah, I'd hear. But I want us to look at our life, our day-to-day -day life, hour by hour if we have to. Do we have it so jam-packed and, and filled with entertainment and there's no quiet time, there's no stillness in our day? Because if there's not... doubt we're going to hear because when we're filling ourselves we fill our days and then we fill ourselves with all the other things whether we you know have the tv on or have this on or have that on and there's always people around and we fill ourselves and we fill ourselves and we fill ourselves so then when god goes to speak to us we're already full there's no room there's no room left to listen that's not being ready. Being ready is ensuring that we make ourselves, and I say make ourselves because it doesn't come easy, because life is hard. We get busy. We have jobs. We have obligations. We have things, and then we like entertainment. I like entertainment. I like good TV shows. I like playing board games with friends. But when we put all that ahead of our time with God, we're not being ready for what God has for us. We're already filled up to the brim. Sometimes we're filled up to the brim with stress. True statement. If that hurt a little, I want you to talk to the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes we get so stressed out about everything, we never stop to just be still and say, okay, God, I'm here. He knows. He knows what we're going through. But we have to stop and be able to just be still. Am I saying go up on a mountaintop and spend three hours in silence? Hey, if you have time for that, and that is what God's asking you to do, do it. But if you have five minutes in a car, turn the music off. I love worship music. I love all kinds of music. But if you only have five minutes in a day, and that happens to be in a car, turn the music off and say, all right, God, I'm here. Because we have to make room for him within us so that when he does pour out his rain, we're ready. But if we continue to fill ourselves with everything going on, man, when that rain comes, we're going to be like the first farmer. We're not going to have any crops. We're going to have a muddy mess, and we're going to be weeping because we missed what God had. I don't want to be that way, and I pray you don't want to be that way either. <laughs> so 
So what is it that each of us need to do in this preparation season? It's really cool because there are times I spend with God and I get to see where he's taking us as a whole. And it's really exciting and sometimes it's terrifying. It's kind of where we are right now. It's a good terrifying. But then as a whole, we all have individual lives. And it's like last week, we talked about the bread on the table. We almost set one up today. When we don't reach out for God, it's just like sitting at a table. We're pulled up to it. And it's covered in all the breads you could ever want. It's it's all the deliciousness. It's all there. It's right there. But we're sitting there with our arms crossed. And we're mad because no one is picking up the bread and feeding us. We're mad because no one's handing us the roll to devour. And we just sit there and we stare at it. It's the same with the word of God. We have to pick up our scripture. If you don't read well, that's okay. The YouVersion app, hit listen. I know a ton of people who do that. Listen to the word of God. Because otherwise, we're starving ourselves spiritually, so when the Holy Spirit does pour his rain out, we're not going to be able to receive it because we're going to be so filled with everything else because we've never taken time to stop. We've never taken the time to read his word. We've never taken the time to stop and grab a roll and sit there and eat it. Instead, we're waiting for someone else to feed us. The church in America right now, wants to be fed. But God never said, go to church every Sunday just so you can be fed and don't feed yourself the rest of the week. He didn't say that. In the church in America, it says, I'm going to church, but I'm not being fed. I'm going to church, but it's not fulfilling enough. I'm going, and I didn't like the rolls they served that day. You know what? Sometimes we need the hard to swallow bread. Otherwise, we're never going to change. We're never going to grow. We're never going to get closer to Jesus. We can't be those people. We have to we have to look at Jesus and learn from him. We have to look at the word of God and learn from it. Just cuz it sounds good doesn't mean it's biblical. Do you hear me on that? Just cuz it sounds good doesn't mean it's biblical. Just cuz it's called Christian doesn't mean Jesus would approve of it. And we got to remember that. And so we have to be careful because this slides into idol worship. Now, back Old Testament, there was a, a real popular god called Baal. Did I say that right? Baal? I always want to call him Baal, but it's not. It's Baal. So a lot of people would design things like um, bulls. There we go, bulls. And that was their idol worship for this God, right? And today we don't design, you know, statues of bulls and go worship them, right? If you do, let's talk. Um, today, idol worship looks a little different. And it can be defined as this. We depend on blank more or instead of God. Idols can be power. We want control. Our appearance. We care more about our appearance than we do what God thinks. Material possessions. Money. We can idolize a workplace. We can idolize a spouse. And family. When we care and depend upon others more than we do God, it slips into idolizing. It does, even our kids. And when we find ourselves depending upon someone or something else more than God, we need to reset. We need to get back to be still and get back to God. Pick up that role that he has for us and eat it and not wait to be fed. Because just being a good person isn't enough. It sounds good. Another thing that sounds good, but it's not biblical. We see everywhere. Just be a good person, you'll get to heaven. Just be a good person, that's good enough. No. That's not, that's not. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. 
I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. That's redundant. Who said I say that? What am I? Who are we kidding? I say that all the time. But just being a good person isn't enough to get to heaven. It says in 1 John 5, everyone who believes that Jesus Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commands. Loving God means keeping his commands and his commandments are not burdensome. All right, here we go. Verse 4. If you hear nothing else I say today, I want you to hear this. And I did not give this to Matt. This was something God added during worship. For every child of God defeat the evil world. You hear me? For every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That is good. Guess what? The darkness that we face, the situations that we face, if we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, man, we can overcome it. Yeah, we have to walk through it. But man, on the other side is a lightness, a goodness that is there. Yes, there are times we have to walk through it, but we're not alone. We're not alone for every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. We have to have faith when walking through the dark times. We do. It's not easy. But there goes back to being still before the Lord. Now, verse 11. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have God's son does not have life. Verse 10, all, believe, all who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about his Son. The only way to have eternal life is through Jesus Christ. It is. Good deeds and being a good person is not enough. might be enough for the world around us, but it's not enough for God. So we have to invite Jesus Christ in as our Lord and Savior. So where is God at with us? Where is he in our lives? You know, as we read Elijah, man, Elijah had faith. He had faith. He said, no, it's not going to rain. didn't rain. He said, no, you'll have enough bread and olive oil. The Lord, he's there. He, you'll have it. They did. You know, the, the son died. And Elijah said, God, what are we doing? And had faith and spoke it because he, he had received from God. I guarantee there's other parts. Just go read about Elijah this week. Just trust me. It'll bless you. Now, do we want to be ready? Do we want that? Do we desire to be ready for what the Holy Spirit has for us, for our family, for our community? Do we want that? Because there's an urgency. There is an urgency that God has put within me. And I about can't stand it. It's good, but it's an urgency saying, get ready. As many times as I hear him in our quiet time saying, get ready, get them ready. And it's like seeing a child stand on their own two feet for the first time. That's what God is trying to do with each of us. He needs us to stand on our feet. He needs us to stop waiting for someone else to hold us. He needs us to stop waiting for someone else to feed us. He's saying to get ready. We have to stand on our feet. And if we feel weak, we have to reach out to one another. Because it's okay. It's okay to be drowning. And reach out to someone. It's not okay to be drowning and just let the waves take us under and take us out. That's what Satan wants. So are we ready? Are we ready? Because we've been in a drought. 
We've seen glimpses here and there. We have. There have been mornings and there have been times where we see glimpses and the Holy Spirit's moving. But we've been in a drought. But man, it's time for rain. It is time for rain. And within that rain, man, can spiritual light break in. Darkness breaking off. Healing. Overall, I can't even describe it. But you know. You just know. Now, first, before we move into what we're about to do for just a few minutes, I want us, I know I love our board. You guys just need to know that. Like, our church has, like, the best board ever. I talk to pastor friends, and they're having all these pro. And I'm like, no, mine's the best. Uh Uh-huh. Now, board guys, don't don't turn on me because I said no. (laughs) All right, so (laughs) just joking. Anyhow. They, uh, I know they have put together um, a little cake and punch thing. Um, We feel very honored about that. We do. But, I say but, don't rush the end of things, okay? Because this, what we're about to do in a minute, is more important. It's the best way to show appreciation to the Lord. By letting the Holy Spirit work on your heart. I mean, I also love cake and punch. But don't, I'm just saying that because my mind's automatically like, all right, let's hurry this up so we can get to the next thing, next thing, next thing. We have a busy day. But let this be a test of us being able to sit still. All of that can wait. We need to be open for what the Holy Spirit wants to do. All right, with all eyes closed. If you're here or watching online and uh, you want to know Jesus for the first time, or maybe it's been a while, and you're like, no, I want that hope again. I want to get back to that. I'd love to pray with you. So if you're online, pray this. Send us a message. I'm the one that gets those. If you're here, raise your hand. I just want to pray with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was you right now. Ask Jesus in as your Lord and Savior. Now ask Him to forgive you of your sins. And invite Him in to lead your life from this point forward. All right, now, that's the best decision ever, I'm just saying. Hands down. Hands down. Now, we're going to take just a few minutes and declare, all right, Holy Spirit, we're ready. We want you to reign. We want what you have for each of us. We want what you have for us as a whole. And we're going to take a few minutes and just say yes. Or maybe right now we're struggling with something. Maybe we're struggling with with darkness or healing or something that's needed. Maybe we're struggling somewhere. Maybe we need a peace. Maybe we need wisdom. This is perfect because when we stop and we praise and we ask him to rain down, he does. So right now, I'm asking. God is asking. Are we ready? Are we ready to say, yes, Holy Spirit, bring your reign? We will be ready. Matt's going to put on this this lyric video. And yeah, it's going to feel awkward because sometimes things feel awkward. And you guys should all know now, I am pastor of the awkward. So Matt's going to put on this lyric video. And it's a, I haven't heard it in forever. I listened to it eight times this morning. It's called Let It Rain. So if you will, join with me in just worship and just singing this. Just let it rain. This is us as a body right now saying yes. We are ready. Let it rain. It's us saying yes. 
this is going on inside of me, let it rain because you're the only one that can take care of it. It's saying, yes, I have these worries, but man, Holy Spirit, I need your spirit right now because you're the only one that can take this away. You're the only one that can heal this. You're the only one. I need your guidance. So right now, please just stand with me and come forward, if you will, or if you want to stay where you're at. But don't, don't let this go by because right now we are together saying, Holy Spirit, let it rain. Let it rain within our lives and as a body because this is what we have to do to move forward. We have to be willing and ready for the Holy Spirit to come and allow him within us. God, right now, just as we begin to just worship you, have your way. Have your way completely in and through this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here.
God, you know exactly what you're doing. God, you let it rain. Send your spirit. God, we pray that you send your spirit. Let it rain. Prepare us. Convict us when we need it so that we are ready. So that we are ready for you. Because we, we're ready. So God, you, you send us whatever it is that we need to do within us so that we are ready. God, if we go to choose something else before choosing you, God, you come in and you remind us. You say, that is not me. You need to choose me first. So God, you have your way, your way, because we are ready for you and what you have. God, help us. Help us to, to get ready even more, God. God, you have your way completely in and through us. And God, right now, I just pray blessing and protection. The enemy doesn't like it when we step out and do things for you. The enemy doesn't like it when we come close to choosing you over him. <coughs> the enemy doesn't like it when we want to step out of darkness. But God, you are bigger than the enemy. Greater are you who is in me than he who is in this world. And so, God, we're holding on to your truth. And, God, I pray protection over this body, whether they're here or not. I pray protection over their minds, bodies, and souls, God, from the enemy, because we are not his children. We are your children. And so, God, I pray protection. God, right now, I just feel, oh, I feel you. We need to pray for Israel right now. God, right now, we just ask that you protect them. You know exactly what is going on. And so, God, you do what only you can do. God, we pray just protection over them, over the families, God, over everything that is going on, Lord. Lord, we pray for Israel. Your word tells us that we need to. And so, God, right now we come together. We don't just pray for us, but we're also praying for them. And, God, just, just protect them. God, turn hearts around. You come in and do the miraculous, Lord. Lord, you have your way. And God, we thank you. We thank you for, for doing things we can't even imagine. Thank you for this day. I thank you for this time that we've had together. Lord, I pray blessing as we step forward and out for you. The enemy has n cannot stop us because we serve you, God. God, protect our family, our friends. And God, I pray for those who don't know you yet. We pray for them because, God, you change lives. And so right now we pray for those that, that we love, that we care about, that don't know you. God, you begin to reveal yourself through us and through others because, God, you draw us close. And, God, we just thank you. We thank you for who you are and what you have ahead. We thank you for this moment and in the stillness. Lord, we love you. And we ask this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. He has such great things ahead. Believe it. There is freedom from whatever we're walking through. There is healings ahead. There's healings and now. They can happen within just us and spending time in the quiet. We don't have to wait to be together for God to move. We can be anywhere, anywhere, and invite him. So I pray that you're encouraged today. You're encouraged by his word. And I pray that each of us are challenged to spend more time with him. I pray that we are. We never grow without a challenge. We never grow without a challenge. So I pray we are challenged to feed ourselves, and we are encouraged by the faith we have through Jesus Christ. So you guys, I love you all. I'm praying for you. Have a wonderful week. Oh, I guess I'll see you in a few minutes. There's cake and punch. Bye, guys. Oh, and then tonight, harvest party, chili cook-off. Come support your youth and meet them. They're a good time.